Hello and welcome to the Proverbs Daily Devotional. Today we're going to look at a subject that is all over the Proverbs, quite frankly, and um, it's about envy and envying other person's possessions. So we'll get right into it. Proverbs chapter 3, 31 and 32 reads, Do not envy the violent or choose any of their ways. For the Lord detests the perverse, but takes the upright into his confidence. Proverbs 23, 17 through 19. Do not let your heart envy sinners, but always be zealous for the fear of the Lord. They, there is surely future hope for you, and your hope will not be cut off. Listen, my son, and be wise, and set your heart on the right path. Proverbs 24, 1 and 2. Do not envy the wicked, and do not desire their company. For their hearts plot violence, and their lips talk about making trouble. Proverbs 24, 19 and 20. says, Do not fret, fret because of evildoers, or be envious of the wicked. For the evildoer has no future hope, and the lamp of the wicked will be snuffed out. And lastly, Proverbs 27, 4 reads, Anger is cruel and fury overwhelming, but who can stand before jealousy? <clears throat> Petrarch wrote that there are five, and this is a quote, five great enemies of peace inhabit with us, avarice, ambition, envy, anger, and pride. And if those enemies were to be banished, we should infallibly enjoy perpetual peace. One of the things that keep us from real peace inside is envy. It festers inside, in, uh, inside of us and takes com contentment away from us. It, dry, it creates a drive for us to compare with others and to desire to be better or equal with other people's possessions and even their achievements. Augustine said in, his, um, in the free choice of the will, he indicated it is passions that, quote, rage like tyrants and throw into confusion the whole soul in life of man with storms from every quarter, unquote. He later goes on to say it's the soul as having, quote, eagerness to win, win what is not possessed. Whenever he turns, avarice can confine him. Self-indulgence dissipates him. Ambition masters him. Pride puffs him up. Envy tortures him. And sloth drugs him, unquote. We often think of jealousy and envy as the same, but they do have a, a little bit of a difference. Jealousy is when you have something but fear losing it. Envy is when you don't have something and you desire to have it. Jealousy wants to keep you keep what you already have. Envy wants to gain what someone else has. The Hebrew term or word for the uh, envy is uh, kinah. It's often translated as jealousy or zeal uh, as well. Every occurrence in Proverbs is in the negative sense of jealousy or envy and warns coveting the wealth possessions of evil people who, that it was obtained uh, by dishonesty, the, the possessions. The Hebrew word even has a competitive angle to it. Look at this. In Genesis chapter 30, verse 1, it says, Rachel in her barren state envied her sister. And then in Genesis 26, 14, the Philistines envied Isaac for the multitude of flocks and herds that he owned. So in Proverbs, we see a variety of things. One, do not envy the, the violent. That's in 331. Do not let your heart envy sinners. That's in 2317. Do not envy the wicked. That's in 24 verse 1. Do not fret because of evildoers or be envious of the wicked. That's in 2419. It's so easy to get pulled into desiring what other people have, even if it was obtained by dishonesty. 
we do wonder what it would be like to throw caution to the wind and to, to have a life without ethics. Uh, keep in mind that sin can be attractive. Otherwise, we wouldn't have much problem with dealing with it. The pleasures of sin might be short-lived, as, as they talk about in Hebrews chapter 11, 25, which states uh, the fleeting pleasures of sin, but they are not dull and boring. That's the whole problem with sin, is that they're actually attractive. So it does at times seem like the wicked go through life with ease and advantages. If they get into trouble, they lie their way out of it. They do things while seemingly dodging accountability. So it's easy to see why envy can be such a problem for us. But we don't only envy the ungodly, we can even envy our fellow Christians. It can happen so fast in, these, in, ver in a variety of situations, Say, such as we maybe hear a better speaker, or we see a better leader, or there's a bigger church, or different, just a whole variety of things. It just, the list goes on. The, <clears throat> So God provides us with a remedy for envy. Asaph, which you may not know who that is, he was a, uh, basically a worship director for the Israelites. He was torn with envy. He wondered how the righteous struggled, righteous struggled in living while the evil had often extravagant lifestyles. He, it affected him so much that he, his faith almost left him. While we might have missed this story of his struggle, he actually wrote a song about it, detailing what his mind dealt with. Turn to uh, the Psalms chapter 73, and we'll read that together. Not the whole chapter, or half chapter, but we'll read portions of it. So let's start out in verse 1, and you'll see what the mind of Asaph was dealing with. Surely God is good to Israel, to those who are pure in heart. But as for me, my feet had almost slipped. I had nearly lost my foothold, it says. Verse 3, for I envied the arrogant when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. They have no struggles. Their bodies are healthy and strong. They are free from common human burdens. They are not plagued by human ills. Then in verse 6, therefore pride is their necklace. They clothe themselves with violence. Number, uh, verse 7, from, from their callous hearts come iniquity. Their evil imagination have no limits. Number 8, they scoff and speak with malice, with arrogance. They threaten oppression. Verse 9, their mouths lay claim to heaven and their tongues take possession of the earth. Therefore, their people turn to them and drink up waters, waters of abundance. Verse 11, they say, how would God know? Does the Most High know ever, anything? Verse 12, this is what the wicked are like, always free of care. They go on amassing wealth. Verse 13, surely in vain I have kept my heart pure and have washed my hands in innocence. All day long I have been afflicted, and every morning brings new punishments. You can sense the pain and frustration in Asaph as he was, you know, writing that. It just comes off the page at you. Um, but Asaph actually found deliverance from this feeling. So let's read on. Drop down to Psalms Still in the same chapter, 73, but in verses 16 and 17. When I tried to understand all of this, it troubled me deeply. Here's the, here's the, uh, the good part. Till I entered the sanctuary of God, then I understand, or understood rather, their final destiny. So the chapter continues on after that, outlining what their, the wicked's final destiny was. Uh, so re let's review the ways that Asaph did to resolve his feelings and get over this envy that he had. He reordered what was important. He took wisdom over wealth. He changed his view, eternal over worldly. 
He assessed and adjusted his values. Deeper relationship God with any other treasure. So envy, while it might be, we might be able to ignore it for a while, eventually it will consume us. If we focus on what others have and become envious, it will rob us of that peace that passes understanding and we will become resentful and eventually uh, envious and destroy us. As Solomon says in Proverbs 14.30, he says that envy rots the bones. If, en if en envy is creeping in or you are in an all-out struggle with it, God provides a way out, just like with Asaph. A big sign of maturity in this area is being able to appreciate the gifts of another person in having understanding and confidence in the sovereignty of God, sovereignty of God, which we'll talk about in another session, but <clears throat> like jealousy, revenge, discontentment, all of which we'll talk about in other sessions, sessions as well, we can engage God for our deliverance. Why spend all this negative energy on envy when God provides us with his power to be victorious in all of these things? God will make a way. All, every, like I've said numerous times, Proverbs, it, the real message here is drives you to a deeper relationship with God. That's what he wants. He wants intimacy with his people. I hope you enjoyed this uh, session and we'll look forward to you next time. God bless.